Okay everyone, this video will include my immediate reactions to Royal Rumble 2018, as well as my review of NXT TakeOver Philly, which happened last night. So, what did I think of the Royal Rumble? Well, um, I mean it was the best Royal Rumble, the match itself, like the men's Royal Rumble match was the best Royal Rumble in God knows how long. Uh, the match was really well done, the most enjoyable Rumble in years, and when I say years, I mean close to a decade, like, holy shit, I haven't enjoyed a Rumble that much in a dog's age, that was nice, that was nice, I really enjoyed that. The rest of the show, um, well, well let's just go through it match by match, um, we started off, and I didn't watch, uh, any of the pre-show matches except for the US title match, which was terrible, like, don't ever give Mojo Rawley a match longer than three minutes ever again, for the love of God, like, that was putrid, but it was a pre-show match, so I'm not gonna get too upset over it, um, we opened up with the WWE title match, AJ Styles versus Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, that match, uh, I, I guess it was fine for what it was, I wasn't a huge fan of, I I'm never a huge fan of whenever they do this, and WWE is like the kings of this, and that is doing handicap matches with, like, main event or, like, high-level talents, um, on the side, like, the multi-numbered side, so you've got Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, so these aren't, like, two jobbers, these aren't, like, two scrubs, and AJ Styles isn't a gigantic Andre the Giant-style monster, so to me, the two-man team wins, but I knew AJ was gonna retain, because that's just, they always do this in handicap matches, so it's like, whatever, they'll find some way to negate the whole numbers game thing, and just ruin it, and, um, They've done it so frequently. I mean, Cena made a career out of it to the point that it was absurd. And then uh, CM Punk won a, a three-on-one against The Shield, which I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, um, you know, all types of crap like that. And to me, uh, you know, the three-man team or the two-man team should beat the one. I, I mean, that's just my feelings on it. Unless, like I said, it's a situation where it's like a bunch of jobbers or... Uh, you, the guy on the other side is like a Braun Strowman or a Big Show or somebody like that, and he just throws people around. But uh, in this case, it just feels like, okay, so Sammy and Owens are going to lose and kind of look stupid doing it. And they did kind of look stupid. I know they did the thing with um, AJ pinning Owens when Owens wasn't the legal man and the ref screwed up, and that allows like Sammy and Owens to kind of continue their whole, like, oh, Shane McMahon's out to screw us, or blah, 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 whatever. I don't really care. <laughs> I don't, I, I don't really care, but, uh, I'm sure that'll build into mania somehow. It'll probably be Shane and a partner, maybe Daniel Bryan, who knows, uh, going up against Sammy and Kevin, but that match, it was just, uh, it was cool to see AJ retain the title, I guess. I, I mean, my AJ Styles fandom is kind of overriding, um, you know, my typical logic here, but it's just like, I mean, there's no reason for AJ to drop the belt, but I wouldn't have signed a handicap match anyway, so... Um, I probably would have done just AJ versus Sammy or AJ versus, uh, well, not AJ versus Owens, because fucking hell, I saw that match, like, 18 times last year, but, uh, yeah, I would have just done AJ versus Sammy with Owens and Sammy's corner or something, but that's just me. So, yeah, that match happened, AJ retained, it pretty much played out exactly how I expected it to. Um, next up was the SmackDown title match, tag title match, uh, the Usos versus Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable kind of a normal tag match. Uh, it was two out of three falls. I like that the Usos won two straight falls because it's kind of a foregone conclusion that these matches go to the final fall. So whenever they don't do that, I actually like it because, and I know that's something that's going to reflect negatively on like the star ratings or anything like that, but it works in the long run because it makes it more dramatic because it's like, oh, they can lose two straight falls. So, you know, that second fall does matter. It's not just white noise to get to the, the final fall. So, uh, I, I like that the Usos won two straight falls. I just, uh, the match went a little too long for me. Like, that first fall felt like it was going on forever. And it just, it, the match just didn't really click for some reason. I don't know what it was. It just felt like a fair, fairly standard tag team match. It just didn't really do it for me. But, um, it was, it, it was what it was. It was just one of those. It wasn't terrible, but I was just kind of like, okay, whatever, that just happened. Uh, and then we got the Men's Royal Rumble match, which kind of affected uh, the flow of the rest of the show. And I'll get into that when I get into the, the remaining matches. But 
Um, like I said, the Men's Royal Rumble match I thought was very good. I thought it was the best Rumble in years. A lot of fun stuff happened. And it got really dramatic towards the end where it came down to Finn Balor, Shinsuke Nakamura, John Cena, and Roman Reigns. And then Balor got eliminated and I was like, oh no. It's like, it, please let Nakamura win. Please do not. Just don't let Cena or Reigns win this for the love of- and if it comes down to Cena and Reigns, fuck you. And Philly was ready to shit on it. That was the funniest part. They were totally ready to shit on it. But, um, uh, Nakamura came through, ended up winning, and now we're gonna have AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura at WrestleMania. That has been confirmed, which, thank you WWE for giving us the match we want. Um, they're still gonna do Roman versus Lesnar, and you know what? It's like, all right, fine, do that. But could you let us have AJ versus Nakamura? They're letting us have AJ versus Nakamura. So I'm just like, all right, thank you. They might do Cena versus Taker, to which I really don't give a shit about that either. Because uh, I do not want to see Undertaker work ever again. But uh, it's uh, the Royal Rumble. They went with the right guy, and it made for an exciting match from start to finish. And I really enjoyed the Rumble. A lot of fun stuff here. Uh, Elias had a fun bit. Uh... Even though I knew when he came out, I was like, all right, Cena's going to eliminate him. And sure enough, he did it almost immediately. But uh, Elias did get to shine a little bit. Had a really fun moment where he uh, did his little concert mid-match after Baron Corbin beat up everybody. Which is funny. I was like, oh, it's like Corbin's a stage crew. He was just cleaning up the stage and let uh, Elias do his performance. Rusev was fucking mad over. Like, the whole Rusev day has gotten insanely over, which is crazy. But uh, that made for a lot of excitement and a lot of fun. Um... No, like, old guys. They didn't bring in a lot of old guys. Some NXT guys, Adam Cole, Bebe, showed up. Um, you know, uh, uh, Andrade Cien Almas got a spot in the Rumble. It actually had a bit of a, a Marathon Man-style performance. Uh, Finn Balor was the real Iron Man of this particular match, but uh, Almas lasted a really long time in there. Zelina Vega is super hot, by the way. I'm just throwing that out there. I like that lady. She's, uh, she's very nice. Very nice indeed. Um... But, yeah, I thought the Rumble was really good. And it's just, I, I've been so down on the Rumble for the last few years. I was like, oh my goodness, this actually turned out pretty well. Um, as far as old guys go, I'm trying to think. I think Ray Ray was the only one, Ray Mysterio, which is crazy. I thought he was locked up in Matanza's basement somewhere. Like, what? I thought Dario Cueto had the key and he had Ray locked up. I was like, oh well, whatever. Uh, I guess he got out for a night. I guess Dario let him out for a night. I don't know. But, um,. Uh, yeah, I thought the men's rumble was really well done and very exciting and uh, very entertaining, almost from start to finish. I was like, man, that was a really good rumble. Good for them. That was. It's the first time I've enjoyed the rumble this decade. I'm like, yeah, all right, awesome. Now, the problem was the men's rumble was so good that it kind of killed the second half of the show because after this, I was done. I was just like... I feel like I saw everything I wanted to see, so what else is left? And uh, the next match definitely suffered the most. Uh, the Raw tag title match of Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan versus The Bar. If you can tell me anything that happened in this match, I would love to hear it because I was just zoning out the entire time and I just thought this match has gone on way too long. It did not need to be this long. It's basically, this match was basically the intermission. Uh... Which I guess the only justification for it being as long as it was is that they wanted to give people time to go to the bathroom and then get snacks or whatever. But this match just seemed to go on forever and just wouldn't stop. And no one gave a shit. Nobody cared. And uh, I don't know. It's just one of those things. It's like I, I was thinking back to uh, like old WrestleManias and old pay-per-views back in the day where they would have like a big match and then the next match would be like this quick three or four minute filler just to kind of kill time and give people time to recover. Or, um, uh, uh, Super Brawl 8 was an example that came into my mind where, uh, they had the Outsiders versus the Steiner brothers and that was the match where Scott Steiner turned on Rick. They kept that match to like four minutes. They did the heel turn and got out of there. And here, what the story they were trying to tell is that Jason Jordan got the concussion and effed up by tagging in Seth and saying, I can't go in there. And that effed up the match and Seth lost. And the bar won back the titles. And it's like, okay, yeah, I get you were trying to tell that story, but I felt like you could have done that in a much tighter window. It's like, that was definitely something where it was like, uh, get to the point. Like, you don't need to belabor it or linger on it. Just like, just tell the story you want to tell, get to the point. 
and then just move on from there. This match, this match felt like it was like 15 minutes long, and felt even longer than that. So, uh, yeah, this match was terrible. But it was, I mean, it wasn't anybody's fault uh, as far as the in-ring performers go. It was just one of those things that. Uh, they had to follow the Royal Rumble and nobody cared. That's basically what happened, and the match went on way too long. But uh, after that was Brock Lesnar defending the Universal title against uh, Braun Strowman and Kane. Match was... Uh, I mean, Lesnar retained. We all knew he was going to retain. Um, a couple of fun things that they did with the announce table, but other than that, it was just them kind of swinging chairs and breaking tables and... Kind of an anticlimactic finish. And uh, the weird thing is, and the Attitude Era kind of ran into this problem sometimes, where the build-up was cooler than the match itself. <laughs> uh, they did so much crazy shit in the build-up that the match feels somewhat mundane by comparison. That's kind of what happened here. Uh, I'm trying to think of an example where that happened. Where, I, I guess... Uh, well, I can think of a TNA example where that happened. Sting and Foley at Lockdown in the Steel Cage, where they hyped it up like it was going to be the most violent match ever, and the end result was like, well, that was ordinary. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, it was a... Uh, the, the match was it was what it was. It was just a roadblock on Lesnar's road to WrestleMania, and that's really all it was designed to be, I guess, but, uh, Kane looked old, and I know the mask hides some of it, it's kind of like what I used to say about Sting, it's like, yeah, the face paint hides the age somewhat, but when you start moving and start doing the moves, it's like, yeah, I start to see the age a little bit, and I could see it in Kane here, uh, Kane didn't look that great, but it was, uh, I mean, Strowman was still the star of the match, but it just, it was just kind of a blah match, really, and the anticlimactic finish didn't help, so whatever, that match happened, and then we got the Women's Royal Rumble, which they set up as the main event, now, the problem here is that, okay, there were two problems, one, the men's match was so much better that this one kind of failed in comparison, and it wasn't a bad rumble, it was just so ordinary compared to what the men did that it just felt like, eh, why didn't the men close? I mean, I, I hate to say that. I really do. But I know this was a big deal to a lot of the women. And um, uh, there was a lot of member berries uh, aspects to it going on where I think like, okay, how the men's match didn't have a lot of old guys at all. This one was loaded with them where it was just, uh, you know, Trish was in there. Lita was in there. Molly Holly came back. Jacqueline, uh, Tori Wilson, Kelly Kelly. Michelle McCool, Mrs. Undertaker. I guess I could count the Bellas in that since they're not full-timers anymore. Um, it felt like half the match was just people that they pulled from the past. And, uh, you know, it got a little overbearing at some points. It was like, okay, how many old people did you did you wrangle into this thing? Kelly Kelly's still terrible. Um, Lita looked okay, except on that moonsault where it looked like she was going to come down on her head. Like, that was a scary spot there for a second. I was like, oh, Jesus. I hope... She's okay. I hope Lita's okay, because she looked like she was going to come down on her head. But um, Trish looked good. Uh, Tori Wilson's still hot, but was never the greatest worker. So, you know, you just look at her, and that's pretty much all you need. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of some of the other stuff they did. Uh, Beth Phoenix came back. She still she looked good. Jacqueline looked okay, but didn't do much. Molly Holly looked good. I, I was like, good for Molly. I like Molly. Uh, she was one that got uh, kind of... She was kind of the butt of a lot of jokes back in the day, so it was nice to see her get, like, a little nod, if nothing else. Um, one thing that this match did a lot of... There was a lot of knocking women outside the ring, and then they stay there for a really long time, and I completely forgot they were out there. Like, Nia Jax got knocked out at one point, but she didn't get eliminated. And then she just came back, and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot she was out there. And Sasha Banks, who was like the marathon woman of this thing, uh, she started off at number one and then went all the way towards the end. Um, there was a point where she got knocked out of the ring, and I completely forgot she was in the match. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, I forgot she was out there. And there was a lot of that in this match. Uh, um... I think Naomi disappeared at one point. Naomi tried to do, like, the Kofi Kingston thing, where she would have, like, this miracle recovery. Oh, oh I forgot to mention that in the men's match. I thought Kofi Kingston's uh, spot with the pancakes was hilarious. Uh, I thought that was a really funny spot. Best part, best thing that Jinder Mahal's ever been a part of. But, uh, yeah, I thought that spot was funny. But, anyway, um, that spot was okay. They did some neat things here and there. Uh... Uh, Ember Moon was one of the entrants, and that was cool, especially, you know, renewing a rivalry with Asuka. That was neat to see. Uh, so yeah, the, the match
match was fine. It just... I was a little tired after the men's rumble, and the women's rumble wasn't as good as the men's rumble. So it just kind of looked like, eh, okay. It also didn't help that Stephanie McMahon was on commentary, and in a weird way, she fit in right with everybody because she just sat there, said dumb things, and sounded like she was smiling the whole time. And, uh, you know, that weird aspect that Byron Saxton has where he sounds like everything he says, he's saying it with a smile. And Steph kind of had that same quality to her. It's like, yeah, no, in a weird way, she fits right in. So I'm not going to be too much of a dick about it. I mean, she's just like everybody else. She, she wasn't exceptionally terrible. Uh, Vicky Guerrero is still obnoxious. I, you know, people tell me she's like the greatest heel of the generation. I'm like, the, to me, it's like, I would like to see an intriguing character trait get you heat not screeching into the microphone and making my eardrums bleed. That doesn't make for compelling television. I'm sorry, and I've just always felt that way. Um, you know, I'd rather... I'll take Dario Cueto any day of the week over literally anything that Vicky Guerrero, Guerrero ever did. But um, that's just me. And if you want to look at the women, uh, as far as, like, great heels go... Um, who's I thinking of? I just blanked. Uh, Francine at various points of her career... Uh, Definitely could get heat like a motherfucker. Um, Tristratus, very early on, she had that bit where you wanted to see her get put through a table. You wanted to see Bubba Ray put her through a table. Um, and she did that. She legitimately got heat. Uh, and that's what I like to see. I don't like to see just being annoying and getting people to boo you that way. It's like, oh, that's no fun. That's just... That just makes me want to push the mute button. I was like, come on. It's Cersei Lannister is, oh my god, Cersei Lannister is amazing. She's one of the best heels on television. She doesn't screech like a crazy person. She's She just gives the best resting bitch face in existence and just acts like queen bitch to everybody. Well, huzzah! That works. But anyway, I, I'm on a high horse here. Um, I'm trying to think of a couple other things. Mickey James, still hot. I still got my crush on Mickey James. Sarah Logan! is kind of my type. And I'm like, oh my god. Like, I... Could somebody give her my number, like, immediately? Because I'm like, southern gal, curvy brunette, I'm all over that. That is just... Oh, man, Sarah Logan, that's... She's my gal. She's, she's, she's my new age gal. But, uh... Yeah, Asuka won, which I said initially, unless Ronda Rousey is an entrant in this match, Asuka's gonna win. And that's pretty much how it played out. When Trish came out at 30, I was like, okay... Asuka's gonna win, and that pretty much played out that way. Uh, some of the stuff with the Bellas at the end was fun, it, and it kind of had that same aspect to it, where it, in the men's rumble, it's like, oh, the two favored company boys, like Cena and Reigns, um, are getting put up against Nakamura, and they become the de facto heels, and you want to see Nakamura win, and he did. And here it's like, it's Asuka going up against the chosen daughters who are the wives of the big stars, Daniel Bryan and John Cena, or the significant others and the fiancés or whatever. And it's like, oh God, are they going to like have Cena's girl win this thing? Are they going to have, are they really going to do that? They didn't, but um, yeah, it made for, uh, there was some good stuff in this rumble. And I don't want to sound like I'm putting it down. I just felt like uh, it, it paled in comparison to the men's rumble so much that, um, having it main event seemed weird, seemed like a very weird decision until Ronda Rousey came out post-match and made her presence known and proceeded to shake hands with everybody and point at the WrestleMania sign. Cause as I said on Twitter, pointing at the WrestleMania sign makes up for at least half of all mania builds. So I would go even higher, like 75% or so. But, um, now that she's a player, we'll see what she ultimately does at WrestleMania. Um, I mean, she's going to have a big match. I mean, that, that much is clear. I, I don't know. Uh, we don't know who Asuka is going to challenge now that she's won the Rumble. Uh, her options are Alexa Bliss or Charlotte Flair. Um, assuming those two hold on to the belts heading into WrestleMania. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, Ronda Rousey's appearance was a nice surprise to end the show. And I'm like, okay, so that at least somewhat justifies the closing spot for the Women's Rumble. Because that's the big headline that's going to come out of this thing. Is that Ronda Rousey debuted in the... Excuse me. Ronda Rousey debuted in the WWE. So, my thoughts on the Royal Rumble. Um, the men's Rumble was great and was enough to make the show worth it. Uh, the women's Rumble was fine with a nice surprise at the end to make it worth it. Everything else, kind of sweep it under the rug and skip it. Like, just skip it. I'm going to be nice and give the Royal Rumble overall a B. Because I think the... the uh, 
I think the men's rumble was legitimately that good uh, to carry enough of the show to make it worth watching. Uh, but I would, uh, I'm going to give it a B with the caveat of skip all the other matches and just watch the rumble because no other match was really worth it. But hey, if you're gonna, uh, you're only going to have one good match. Make it the Royal Rumble because that's the thing that you're selling the whole show on. So. Uh, yeah, Royal Rumble match. I enjoyed it this year. Hooray! I'm actually smiling! Good for you! Um, God, because that was turning into an annual event. Me bitching at the end of the Royal Rumble. Like, last year, Randy Orton winning it instead of Roman Reigns was a step in the right direction. That's how far down we'd gotten. It's like, wow. Holy shit. But anyway, those are my thoughts on the Royal Rumble. But, uh, I also want to give my thoughts on NXT TakeOver Philly. A uh, show that happened last or the night before the Rumble, and once again, it's another really good entry into the Takeover series. Uh, I'm gonna give this one a B as well, not quite the A that a lot of other Takeovers have been. I'll cover why, uh, but I thought the double main event was really, really good, and ended on uh, the exact note that I wanted it to end on. So uh, the double main event definitely delivered. The undercard kind of stumbled a little bit, and I guess I'll get into that now. Uh, Opening match, it was Red Dragon, and I, I'm not, I refuse to call them the Undisputed Era. I'm like, fuck you, that name is terrible, you should be ashamed of yourselves. It, they're, they're Red Dragon, I'm not calling them anything else other than that. But, uh, O'Reilly and Fish defended the NXT tag titles against the Authors of Pain. Um, I don't know, this match just didn't, maybe I just had a problem with tag matches this weekend. I don't know, this match just didn't click with me. It was, it was okay, it wasn't terrible. Um, a little, there was some awkwardness in there. I liked the finish. I thought the finish was well done with, uh, Red Dragon's counter for the Super Collider, but, um, it just felt like a very ordinary match, and typically NXT TakeOver start off very hot, and I thought that this was a good match to start off with, to start off hot, and it just kind of, like, I don't know, it just kind of fell short for me. Didn't, uh, again, wasn't terrible, it was just kind of okay, and... I'm kind of used to these TakeOver specials, you know, most of the matches being really, really good. So this one kind of fell short for me for some reason. A match that I expected to be really good. Um, NXT, uh, actually, I guess I'll mention this now. They're about to get a few additions to the roster. Uh, War Machine was in the crowd, meaning they're going to show up. And uh, yes, I definitely want Ar Authors of Pain versus War Machine. I think that'd be a good, like, bruiser match to have. Um, EC3 was in the crowd, uh, officially taking Impact Wrestling's greatest guy away from them. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he's going to show up soon. And Ricochet, Prince Puma, uh, whatever you want to call him, uh, he was also in the crowd as well, meaning he's going to show up. And I think Ricochet is one of the best athletes out there today and a damn fine worker. So I, I think NXT, those are some really good pickups. Uh, you know, really good tag team, really great worker in Ricochet and a... Um, a very good heavyweight style talent in EC3 who I think uh, did, I mean, he practically carried TNA for the best anybody could possibly do uh, for as long as he did. Um, but in any case, uh, so yeah, we're going to have a few new additions to the NXT roster, which is going to be really good. Next up was the Velveteen Dream versus Cassius Ono. Velveteen Dream is a superstar waiting to happen and... My only problem, and it has nothing to do with him, he is not at fault at all. He's going to flop on the main roster because they're not going to know what to do with this gimmick. And it's a sh damn shame because God, it'll be Tyler Breeze all over again. But fucking A, this guy is great and the business needs more guys like him because he is so dedicated and committed to his character. And he's found an identity, he's found a voice... And I totally buy into the Velveteen Dream as a character. I think he is outstanding. And anything good I have to say about this match has to do with him. Because I think he is unbelievable. And for him to only have been in the business for a handful of years, I'm like, this guy, this guy is something. I mean, this guy is, he's worth investing in. I was like, damn, this guy is great. And, um... I mean, the first 30 seconds of this match, where he had a pre-match promo where he said he was going to score a 30-second knockout over Cassius Ono, the crowd, who was great, started counting 
to 30 seconds to see if he'd get it. And then at like around 22 or 23 seconds, it looked like he was going to get it. And the crowd started going ape shit and wild. I'm like, wow, that was awesome. And Velveteen Dream just has the crowd eating out of his hands. The entrance was great with like the entourage and the special like mouth guard that he put in, handed to him on the, like the pillow. And it's like, man, this guy is so good. This guy's so good. He gets it. He just, he fucking gets it. Um, how to be a character in this business. And um, that said, the match itself was not great. Um, Cassius Ono, uh, and again, I'm not saying he's a bad worker, but dude, seriously, it's called a treadmill. Get on one. My God, you're fat. Work out or something. And people told me, this, oh, he has a thyroid problem. And I'm like, people with thyroid problems can work out <laughs> like uh, they don't have to look like that or uh, as i've said before or if you're not going to lose the weight then gain like gain like 20 or 30 and make it your gimmick uh, but my god you just look you know his chris hero's whole thing he's supposed to be one of those pure purebred athletic types and he can't do that gimmick now looking the way he does he just no no not at all and uh, he looked completely out of place in there with Velveteen Dream. And the match itself was a little awkward at points. Um, some botches, some things didn't click. Um, again, the only thing that came out of the smelling like a rose was Velveteen Dream himself. Because people were so invested in his character that it almost didn't matter. That there were a few mistakes and a few bits of awkwardness in the match. But uh, towards the end, it looked like Cassius Ono might win. And I was like... That'll be my first fuck you decision, booking decision of 2018 if that happens. Because there's no excuse for Cassius Ono to be going over Velveteen Dream at this point. That would be a foolish, foolish decision. Fortunately, they didn't. Velveteen Dream went over. And I'm hoping for bigger and better things for him moving forward. Because it's like, yes. All right. Let's push that guy. I want to see that guy with the NXT title by the end of the year. Because here's, here's what I'm saying right now. Alistair Black won the Extreme Rules match on this show. Andrade Cien Almas is the champion. It's probably going to be Black versus Almas WrestleMania weekend for the title. Velveteen Dream and Aleister Black already have a feud. They had a great match last year at TakeOver. I want to see that match for the title. I want to see Aleister Black versus Velveteen Dream for the gold later this year. Can we make that happen? I hope so. Uh, but yeah, Velveteen Dream gets major thumbs up for me and A for effort. Uh, the match itself was not that great, but... Uh, I, I think his positives kind of made people, kind of blinded people to the fact that it wasn't that great. Um, I, I can't sing the dude's praises enough. I think he's fantastic. But uh, moving on from there, we had the women's title match, Ember Moon defending against Shayna Baszler. I was actually predicting an upset here, and it looked like it was going to happen. Uh, I thought the match was fine. It wasn't one of the greatest NXT women's title matches ever. Uh, but I thought the closing sequence was really good, and it kind of had that same quality to it that I like about... Zack Sabre Jr. matches where that dude could literally roll around the mat and trade holds for 20 minutes and make it the most exciting thing on the planet because he just makes all these little things matter. And here you had Shayna Baszler injure Ember Moon's arm. Ember Moon hit the eclipse, but her arm was injured, which carried over into the Rumble when she showed up in the Rumble, which I like that. And Adam Cole was injured heading into the Rumble as well. It's like, okay, I like that they're selling their injuries. That's nice. Um, but anyway, uh, Ember Moon... Uh, hit the eclipse, but she injured her arm, and that opened the door for Shayna Baszler to kind of lock in an arm bar, but she couldn't get it fully locked in because Ember Moon kept grasping, kept grasping uh, her hands together, so she couldn't get it fully extended, which is why she didn't tap, because the hold wasn't fully locked on. And they kept kind of like getting into the ropes and rolling around and changing positions and doing all these other things until Ember Moon was able to roll her up for a quick pinfall. I really liked that. I was like, okay, it uses all the mechanics of wrestling and uses the rules to enhance the drama. And sometimes I think guys think that the only way they can have an exciting match is if it's a wild, hardcore match and they can just do whatever they want. But sometimes working within restrictions can create a lot of drama too. I mean, look at any pro sport. Look at football. Um... You know, people, like, are on the edge of their seat deciding, it's like, was he in bounds or was he not? And you look for that little tiptoe, you look for a little tiny slither of green in between the toe and the and the, the white line. So, those little things can really add to the excitement, and I felt like uh, the ending of this match really captured that. So, not one of my favorite women's title matches by any means, but it was fine with a really strong closing sequence, and... 
Uh, Shayna Baszler attacked Ember Moon post-match, which leads me to believe we're going to be getting a rematch, possibly at WrestleMania weekend. The WrestleMania weekend takeover show is shaping up quite nicely, I do have to say. Uh, and I'll get into the thing I really liked about this takeover uh, in a bit. But next match was the Extreme Rules match between Aleister Black and Adam Cole. Uh, really fun match, very enjoyable, wild hardcore match. I like the inclusion of uh, Sanity helping to cancel out Red Dragon. I'm not calling them the Undisputed Era. Fuck that name, it's terrible. But um, Sanity's involvement to cancel out Red Dragon to help out Adam Cole was great because that was one of my questions right off the bat. It's like, well, if it's Extreme Rules, Cole, or, um, Cole's just going to have Fish and O'Reilly run out there and help him, which he did. But Sanity, pre-existing enemies of that group, um, helped even the odds for Alistair Black. So now it's like, all right, we can do Sanity versus uh, versus Fish and O'Reilly for the tag titles. Maybe do a big six man at WrestleMania weekend or something. But um, the the threat was nullified, which opened the door for Alistair Black to get the win, hitting the black mask or hitting the black mass uh, as Adam Cole was going to swing a chair in his face. So um, really good match, wild hardcore match. It wasn't the most violent thing ever. I mean, again, WWE's PG, so it can't be, but. A uh, very enjoyable match, really good, one of the better matches on the show, and that leads us into the main event, Andrade Cien Almas defending the NXT title against Johnny Gargano. Um, very good match, very great, great main event, uh, really enjoyable stuff with high drama towards the end with all these insane moves that they were hitting on each other, and uh, you didn't know where the finish was going to come, and it had some bells and whistles too, uh, using Zelina Vega to run interference, and then Johnny, uh, Johnny Gargano's wife jumped the rail and attacked her and chased her backstage, again, kind of what the previous match did, it's like cancel out the, uh, cancel out the threat, cancel out the obstacle and see if the babyface can win it, um, ultimately, the babyface did not win it, to the disappointment of everybody. Uh, Johnny Gargano, when it looked like he was going to win it, he just couldn't get it done. And uh, Johnny Gargano came up short, uh, but was leaving to a standing ovation until Tommaso Ciampa smacked him in the back of the head with, a cr with one of his crutches. And it's like, okay, I like that, I like that, because you know what we're getting. Ciampa versus Gargano, WrestleMania weekend, a match that began with... One of the best executed heel turns I've seen in years, uh, where I was literally yelling, fuck you, you motherfucker. He took my, my personal, one of my all-time great lines, Johnny Gargano took the wrestling equivalent of a bullet for you, you motherfucker, when he took the ladder shot to the face. He pushed you out of the way, you son of a bitch. Um, goddamn, uh, I, I was channeling my inner JR when I said that, but... Uh, yeah, that heel turn was done so well, it's like, oh my god, when we get that match, it's gonna be amazing, and, uh, now we're getting that match, it looks like, alright, we're starting to really put the pieces into place and get that match for WrestleMania weekend, a match that, if everything goes according to plan, I honestly feel like it could steal the weekend, um, I, I'm really excited for that match, I know we're getting AJ versus Nakamura, which could also kind of steal the weekend, um, but... It, uh, I, I thought this was a great ending to the NXT TakeOver. I thought it was a really good show overall. Again, I wouldn't put it up there as one of my favorite NXT TakeOver specials, but the double main event was really, really good, and the ending in particular was very strong. So, uh, very good show overall. Uh, I'm going to give it a B uh, overall on my rank, because I don't do pluses or minuses. It's just going to be a B. Um, you know, I, I think it was a better... If I had to compare the two shows, I think it was a better complete show than the Royal Rumble, which had a lot of dead air. Uh, the Royal Rumble match itself was very entertaining and was enough to get me to recommend the show, but uh, I think NXT TakeOver overall was a better show, which is not uncommon. These typically NXT TakeOvers are better. I can't, I, honestly, off the top of my head, I can't think of a single case where the NXT TakeOver special wasn't better than the WWE pay per view that happened you know, the next night or a few nights later or whatever. But anyway, so yeah, WWE delivered some pretty solid shows this weekend, so good for them. And hey, I finally enjoyed a Royal Rumble this decade. Isn't that great? Isn't that awesome? I thought so. So anyway, those are all my feelings on the Royal Rumble. Uh, I've got a few videos coming out over the next two days. My next Star Wars review, it will be Vector Prime. It should be posted sometime later tomorrow evening. And... My top 10 match video, which I'll say it now, it's my top 10 favorite AJ Styles matches. So, uh, if you're a fan of AJ Styles like I am, 
Let's celebrate the Phenomenal One with some of my favorite matches that the Phenomenal One has had over his long and illustrious career and his excellent, excellent body of work. So, uh, those videos should be up over the next two days. Uh, that is all I have for you now. Y'all have a good night. Have a happy Monday. Enjoy your work week and peace out, everybody.